So have you ever had one of those ideas that is so bad that it might actually be good? Or so weird that it just might work, but you're not sure? And it's probably a waste of time, but hey, you gotta try it anyway. This is one of those ideas. And so we're gonna be getting weird with it today. Uh, this is a 25 watt oil pan heater. So it's just a, um, I believe it's just a resistive heating element on here. You can stick it to anything and it'll get hot. Now, if you don't stick it to the right thing, it's going to get so hot that it will pretty much melt and destroy itself and or catch fire. Uh, but if you stick it to something um, thermally conductive like aluminum, uh, you shouldn't have any issues. So what is this all? Well, this is a quarter inch thick, 12 inch by 12 inch aluminum plate. And this is going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, a heating plate for underneath my desk. Now, not this desk. It'll actually go underneath my the desk that I work from. So the plan here is to drill six holes, use some number eight. These are actually stainless, uh, stainless screws with some rubberized bonded washers and bolt this thing to the underside of the desk, slap on a heating element, and get some heat to conduct through the desk to have a heated desktop. Is this a good idea? No. Is it practical? No. But you know what? It sounds fun, so I'm gonna try it anyway. So getting right into it, I'm gonna use a Sharpie here and mark out where I want to put my six holes for the screws. I also want to decide which, which way I want to orient this. I think I want to have it uh, this way, so I'll have one, two, three, and then four, five, and six here, which are out of frame. And I'll probably, I'll get really close to the edge here. I don't know, one, one ruler's width in? Yeah, that'll do. So, Let's see, I'll go every three inches. Hmm. I'll go in one inch from either side, then one in the middle. The accuracy of these holes is absolutely non-critical. It makes absolutely no difference where these go. They just need to be, you know, close enough. All right, that will work just fine. Now that I have my six holes marked, I want to kind of think about where I want to put this heating element. I am thinking that 25 watts may not be enough. Keep in mind a standard incandescent light bulb is anywhere from 50 to 60 watts. Sometimes they're down into like the 40 watt range. And think about the heat that comes off of that. Now part of that energy goes into light as well. So if you have put in 50 watts of pure heat, it'll be slightly hotter than 50 watts of heat and light. So, but I'm, I'm starting off small here. I can always add a second one, which is why I think I want to bias this um, to be centered, but closer to the front of the desk where my hands and wrists would be. And the, the part of the plate that's closest to me already has to be a couple inches inboard of the edge of the desk because there's a, um, a pipe or a steel tube that runs along the front because it's a steel tube framed desk with a um, MDF top. So I think something like that. Maybe two and a half inches in. And this thing is, what, five inches long? So 12 minus five would be seven. So three and a half inches in from either side. Yeah, something like that. Obviously I'm not gonna stick this down quite yet because I have to go out and drill the holes. And 
And this will be the, uh, the exact orientation because the way that I'll have this mounted would be flipped over like this and placed on the top because I want the cord coming out this side, which means the cord needs to go out that side. At this point, I think drilling the holes is the next logical step. And here we are, you can see the nicely deburred holes. Originally, I wasn't going to uh, put a chamfer on the holes, but I figured, you know what, professional touch. It's not that tough to do. I also just gave it a wipe, or I gave it a quick wipe down with some sanding paper on a sanding sponge, just to kind of give it a smoother texture rather than the, um, the long striations from the factory. I didn't I could use like uh, a random orbital sander and really sand this thing down smooth and get it all polished up, but it's going to be under a desk. No one's going to see it. Whatever. Another thing, while I was out um, drilling these holes, I thought, you know what? I think I actually do want this to be placed a little bit more centrally, as well as I think I want the cord coming out of the other side. So as I'm sitting at the desk, I want the cord coming out the left side. So I think right about here, I'll move it up one width of the, uh, about one inch, because this is a one by five inch um, heating element. So I think I want to stick it right here, but I also want to wipe it down with alcohol. So I've got a couple alcohol wipes here that I can use. I did wash this thing off um, after I came in from the shop to drill it out. So it is pretty clean, but you know, you can already see I got some extra residue off there. So what do you say right there? Any objections? No? All right, let's do it. Good. It's nice and not square. That way you know it was done by a human and not a robot, right? <laughs> Excellent. So now I have to um, drill six corresponding holes on the bottom of my desk. It's going to be very tough to film that. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, but I mean, come on, it's drilling six holes. You don't really need to see that. So I guess I will just uh, bring you back once everything is assembled. Up. I think it's time for a, uh, a brief intermission to talk about one of my favorite new tools that I've acquired, and that would be some JIS driver bits. So these, as you can tell by the packaging, are not just made in Japan, but these are actually made for the Japanese market and then imported to the U.S. And if you're not familiar with Japanese Industrial Standard, or JIS, it is sort of an alternative to Phillips, uh, at least if in practical terms, that's what you can consider it, but it is way better in like every respect. So here I have a Craftsman screwdriver. It isn't labeled Craftsman, but it is a Craftsman design, so I do believe it is um, a classic Craftsman screwdriver. One of my favorite Phillips screwdrivers, actually. And you can see how it fits here in a couple different styles of screws. All right, it, it fits pretty well. Like, you know, you can tell that is the, that is definitely the correct screwdriver for these screws. That fits really well. But you can still see there is, if I can demonstrate like this, there is still a significant amount of play that we're talking about here. where if you take the 
equivalent Japanese industrial standard driver bit and put it in these same screws. That is rock solid. There's almost no play in that at all. That engages perfectly. And you have a lot more purchase on the screws. So let's go to this other one. Still rock solid, virtually no play. Now let's go to the smaller one. All right, maybe not quite the right size. I think I could go down one size, but even so that's rock solid. Let's try the, is it labeled here? I think this is a JIS number one, or maybe it's a number zero. That's a, maybe a bit small. So I think this is the right size right here. So if you don't have a set of these, pick up a set. They are life-changing. I will no longer ever be buying Phillips screwdrivers again. Everything I buy will either be Japanese industrial standard bits like this or um, actual JIS screwdrivers um, in this form because they work so much better. Now, I have heard somewhere, I don't remember where it was, and I can't say it's a fully reliable source, but I have heard that um, JIS is on its way out, as in it's considered an old standard now and will no longer be um, in production. But you can still get these, and, I mean, come on, these are, if you use these gently and don't abuse them, these are going to last you a very, very long time. So even if the... Japanese industrial standard screws are no longer made, you would, you'll still be able to pick these up here and there, and they will last you a long time. So you'll find JIS screws on old Japanese things like motorcycles, is um, where I know they're very prevalent, and you can tell them apart from Phillips because um, while this is a Phillips, if it was Japanese industrial standard, there would be a little dot um, in between a couple of the flutes here. So, and you know, if the, let's just say this was JIS, there would be a dot right there, an imprint, an impression. So you don't need to use a Japanese industrial standard bit in a Japanese industrial standard screw, um, but you can absolutely use JIS bits in Phillips and the results are amazing. So buy yourself these, this set costs, I think, 12 bucks. It's well worth it. Try it, you'll never go back to Phillips. Well, here is the bottom of my desk. You can see how beautifully non-square this heating element is. Remember, it's important to embrace asymmetry. Otherwise, it's a nice big area to be heated and the reason why I went with quarter inch is because it is still just flexible enough that with some screws um, it will conform to the shape of the desk, but it's stiff enough to, well, it's stiff enough and thick enough to have enough thermal mass that this thing shouldn't overheat, because um, that's my only concern, really. And this thing, this plate could easily be held up with one or two screws in terms of just holding it there, but... Now that I have six on here, I almost think maybe eight screws would have been better just to get more um, clamping force against the um, MDF tabletop here because the better thermal contact you have between this aluminum plate and this um, MDF um, desktop, the better the heat will transfer into the desktop. Um, I could use even a thermal paste between the plate and the desktop, and that would improve the, the thermal efficiency even more. But that's a bit overkill for what I'm trying to achieve here. So at the top of my desk, um, I don't have a thermal imaging camera, but I do have an infrared thermal gun. And if I take a data point from off the desk, or off of where the heater is, you can see it's about 70 degrees. And the heater is right about here. If I take your reading there, you can see it's six or so degrees warmer. 
going off about 70, gets warmer, gets colder. So I think I'm definitely going to need at least one more heater or maybe even do a 25 watt and then like a 50 watt um, so I can stagger it a little bit. And that will means I would be able to do either 25, 50 or 75 watts. I think that would actually be the real way to go. So back under the desk here, I'll try to make sure you can see it. If I take a reading from underneath the desk, we're getting about 70 degrees again. Now, aluminum is not the best thing to um, take a thermal image of like this because it's thermally reflective, but we can probably get a close idea. So at the extremity, we're looking at about 70 degrees. Off the table, it's about the same. As we get closer, it gets warmer and warmer. And then on the device itself, it bounces around a little bit, but I'd say it's between 120 and 140 degrees. So I wouldn't say that that's getting too hot. I can touch it for a few seconds without getting burnt. So I think uh, a second heater will be needed, but so far, hey, I think it works. All right, so this isn't practical. I wouldn't recommend that anyone does this. It's not efficient either. If you're trying to get warm, there are better ways to be warm or, you know, have a more comfortable work environment. This is just for fun. And it sounds like actually a great Kickstarter idea, a heated desktop. It already exists somewhere. I just can't be bothered to look up useless stuff like this. I would rather make it and experiment and fail myself because that is a lot better of an adventure than looking something up online. You know what, speaking of efficiency and practicality, let's do some quick math and see how much it would actually cost annually or not annually, it's, let's just see how much it would cost over roughly a winter um, to run this thing. So in my area, electricity costs 16 cents per kilowatt hour. This thing is 25 watts. And let's just say that I run it for four hours per day five days per week. And let's say I run this for a total of 10 weeks. What does that equate out to? So we'll take 0.16, multiply that by 0 0.025, because it's 25 thousandths of a watt multiplied that by, I'm gonna run out of, I'm gonna run out of space here. Um, four hours per day times five times per week times 10 weeks. Let me grab a calculator. I'll grab my all time favorite calculator, the TI-30XS. So what are we doing here? 0.16 dollars times 0 0.0025, sorry, yeah, 0 0.025 times four hours times five days times 10 weeks, and we get 0.8 dollars. Well, that's, let's see, how long would winter last? Let's just average it out at four weeks a month, so I would run it for November, December, January, February, March, and I'll say April. So five months, that's 20 weeks. So that would be double what I have here, so times two. It would cost a buck 60. That's pretty, that's actually basically free. But now let's say I add a 50 watt heater on top of this. So let's go back up to this original equation and go from 25 to 75 and change the 10 to 20. So it'll cost $4.80 if I run at the full 75 watts for four hours per day for 20 weeks, at five days a week. That's still pretty cheap. So it's not environment ending, but again, it, it's a bit of fun. I think this, this here just shows that 
it's not going to break the bank to do something like this. Electricity is cheap. 16 cents per kilowatt hour is, I think, relatively expensive for the area that I'm in. Other places in this part of the country are as low as even 8 cents per kilowatt hour. And I think the last place I was living, it was 11 cents per kilowatt hour. So that's not, you know, the lowest price out there, but I'm sure there's other places in the world that are much more expensive. So if you have electricity that's, you know, much more expensive than this or much more cheap, definitely let me know. I'd like to know what uh, electricity rates are in other places in the world. And just a heads up going forward with this channel over winter, this sort of stuff, not this exactly, but things like this, things away from cars and motorcycles is probably what you're going to be seeing over the winter. I'll keep up with speaker stuff too, because that's always fun. But because uh, it's winter and outdoors doesn't work as well in my part of the state for the kind of things that I like to do, you're going to see more desk stuff again and weird, oddball, out of left field thing. So that's just a heads up for everyone watching. So until next time, see ya.